There is probably no more inhospitable place in the solar system than our neighboring planet Venus. Often also called Earth's sister planet, this rock planet is so completely different than our lovely homeland. On Venus, it is hotter than on Mercury, and that although it's further away from the Sun than Mercury. The pressure, the pressure on the surface of Venus is about as strong as in 3300 feet underwater on Earth. It would literally crush a human being on the surface of Venus. But these conditions are not only deadly for organisms, technical equipment also fails very quickly on Venus. Visiting the surface of Venus with a probe was long considered impossible. Nevertheless, this technical feat has been achieved Thanks to the Venera probes, humans were recently able to see the bizarrely beautiful surface of Venus with their own eyes for the first time. Venus Although Venus is named after the Roman goddess of love and beauty, the second planet in the solar system as seen from the Sun is a hellish place. Surface temperatures of almost 900 degrees Fahrenheit, an atmosphere enriched with toxins and a pressure 90 times stronger than on Earth, makes Venus a nasty celestial body in our solar system that you really don't want to get close to. Nevertheless, astronomers and physicists naturally wanted to explore our sister planet and had to come up with some ideas to do so. The demands on the technology and especially the camera systems presented engineers and designers with a great challenge. In the end, no one knew whether any terrestrial technology would be able to withstand the extreme conditions on the surface of Venus for even a few minutes. But another hurdle stood in the way of Venusian exploration. Venus wraps itself in a dense cloak of clouds all year round. Never before had researchers or astronomers been able to see the surface of Venus with a telescope. No one could know if a probe flying to the surface could even provide sharp images, or if Venus's toxic haze would reach down to the surface. Another challenge was Venus's unusual rotation speed and orbital direction. The beautiful Venus rotates around its own axis as slowly as no other planet close to the Sun. A Venus day lasts 243 Earth days, and thus longer than a Venus year. Venus makes its round around the Sun in only 225 days. This is not the end of Venus's peculiarities. It also moves around the Sun in the opposite direction. The only other planets with such a retrograde rotation are Uranus and Pluto. Now you may wonder how astronomers on Earth got the idea to name this strange, glowing hot and poisonous celestial body after the goddess of beauty and love. This can be explained actually quite simply. The inner planets were already known in ancient times since they could be easily observed with the simplest telescopes and, as in the case of Venus, also with the naked eye. Venus shines for at least seven months a year as the evening star, the brightest phenomenon after the moon in the night sky. If you have ever observed Venus yourself, you could see that this planet looks like a sparkling diamond to us Earthlings. The Romans could not have known about its toxicity many thousands of years ago when they named the planet after their goddess of love. However, it was only too well known by the middle of the last century that a probe flight to Venus would not be easy. And now comes another special feature of Venus. The pioneers of Venus exploration are not the USA and NASA. The best and so far most unique pictures of Venus were taken by the space project of Russia. The fascinating panoramic images we are about to show you are not from the 21st century either. The incredible technology was developed by Russian engineers and technicians in the 1960s and 70s. The Venera Program In the 1960s, there was a real race between the great nations of the United States and Russia, which was then called the Soviet Union. The Russians sent the first human into space, Yuri Gagarin, on April 12, 1961. In 108 minutes, the first astronaut in human history orbited the Earth and returned to Earth unharmed. In addition, the Russians were already building a first manned space station in the 1960s, which naturally angered the US and spurred it on to conquer the moon as soon as possible. Another very successful program of this period of the space exploration race were the Venus probes of the Russian astrophysicists. 
In Russia, the goddess of beauty is called Venera, and the probes sent to Venus in the 1960s, 70s, and 80s were Venera 1 through 16. Russian spaceflight initially faced harsh setbacks because the Venera probes delivered images that remain a legend to this day. Venera 1 and 2 flew just past Venus. Venera 3 presumably struck the planet, but technicians lost contact with the probe before it entered the atmosphere. On October 8, 1967, Venera 4 entered Venus's atmosphere and transmitted data for 96 minutes until the probe failed at an altitude of 24.96 kilometers above Venus's surface. A similar fate befell the coming probes, some of which reached the surface but could not withstand the hellish conditions for long. The Russian engineers were not discouraged by this. They continued to improve the probes and had no less in mind than to equip the next probes with such advanced camera technology that they would be able to provide pin-sharp panoramic images of the Venusian surface. The Unusual Technology of the Venera Probes The engineering achievement of the Venera probes is still considered an early feat of space travel. Technicians were able to build shields and housings that could withstand the temperatures of up to 900 degrees Fahrenheit on Venus for at least minutes or up to almost an hour. Measurement, radio, and image recording technologies are still among the most sensitive technical equipment today. To accommodate these units in a probe in such a way that neither the heat nor the toxic vapors nor the enormous pressure would immediately destroy them was another master stroke. To accomplish this, the Russian engineers placed a telephoto lens inside the lander, which consisted largely of insulating materials and pressure equalization chambers. Only a porthole, so to speak, peeked out of the thick packing. Using mirror techniques, light from the surface was reflected back through a periscope, which then transmitted it to the camera placed protected inside the probe. To this was added the panoramic camera system, which is no longer a feature today, but was a unique sensation in the 1970s. Although hopes were high, none of the engineers knew whether the first probe equipped with this technology would even reach Venus and successfully photograph it. When Venera 9 was launched on June 8, 1975, another billion-dollar probe flew into space with an uncertain outcome. On October 20, 1975, the probe successfully entered Venus's atmosphere. The excitement at the control center was great. Venera 9 transmitted data for 53 minutes until it soft landed on the surface and started its camera systems. Unfortunately, only one of the mirrors opened, and instead of a 360-degree panoramic image, only 180-degree images were obtained. But these images were still the very first images humans saw of the surface of Venus. Mostly flattened rocks and soil structures can be seen indicating volcanism. Only five days later, on October 25th, Venera 10 reached the surface of boiling hot Venus. And unfortunately, the problem with the second mirror repeated itself with this probe as well. Again, only a 180-degree image was obtained. The technical-looking elements on the image belong to the probe itself. Otherwise, these images of another region of Venus provided a similar picture to the first images from Venera 9. Endless plains with flat and porous appearing rock and traces of volcanism. Venera 11 and Venera 12 were the first to be equipped with color cameras. However, the technology failed upon impact with Venus, and both probes again provided only data and no photographs in 1978. Meanwhile, Russian engineers continued to work on camera technology. By the fall of 1981, Venera 13 and 14 were ready for launch, and in the spring of 1982, both probes successfully landed on Venus. On March 1, 1982, the then Soviet Union again made space history when Venera 13 successfully deployed its mirrors and transmitted to Earth these unprecedented panoramic images of the surface of our sister planet. For a full 127 minutes, the successful project delivered razor-sharp images and the first panoramic views of Venus in color. The images again showed a bizarrely flat landscape with loose rock, no water, and hardly any variations in the environment. A yellow sky and a green-brown world, which seems on the one hand very strange, and then again strangely familiar. 
Surely, apart from the yellow sky, there are similar landscapes on Earth. That the whole of Venus is uniformly covered by wasteland shocks and fascinates at the same time. The Mysterious Fate of Venus Venus is a planet very similar to Earth in size and density. In this century, researchers have found that Venus was very likely once a water planet. Many millions of years ago, it had a truly lovely atmosphere, moderate temperatures, and there may even have been life on Venus. Today, it seems that a runaway greenhouse effect, similar to the one we experience on Earth today, has turned this planet into an inhospitable wasteland. As recently as 2020, researchers using a telescope found traces of organic compounds in Venus's atmosphere. There could be remnants of former life on Venus. Since the fantastic images of the Venera missions, explorations of our sister planet have gone dormant. NASA preferred to send its probes to other planets, and Russian spaceflight lay dormant for a long time from the late 1980s for economic reasons. After the appearance of traces of phosphine, a substance produced on Earth only by living microbes, interest in Venus picked up again. A NASA Venus probe is scheduled to launch in 2029. The Da Vinci mission will explore the Venusian atmosphere in a safe orbit. The Da Vinci Plus lander will land on the surface and deliver photos, but the probe will not be equipped with a panoramic camera. Whether the images will provide new insights is questionable. However, it can be said with certainty today that the images from Venera 13 and 14 will remain the best images of the surface of Venus for a long time to come. To conclude this video, tell us what you think about the unusual technical feat of the Venera probes. Do you think the exploration of our neighboring planets is important? Or do you share the scientists' opinion that the measurement data of distant planets can provide us with significant clues for our own destiny on Earth? We welcome your opinion on the topic and your contributions in the comments.